we learned about what is a test and what is a psychometric test. In this module, we are going to learn about different kinds of psychometric tests. Unlike other instruments of measurement, psychometric tests have a wide variety, and very different measurement approaches might be used depending upon the kind of psychometric test one is dealing with. So let's get started. In this module, we will talk about two general categories of psychometric tests. We will talk about the similarities and differences among these two categories, and we will look at different ways of classification of tests within this category. I would like to emphasize here that there are multiple ways to classify psychometric tests, and different test developers and test publishers use different taxonomy. We will present here the taxonomy which is most commonly used. All psychometric tests can be categorized into two general categories. First category is ability tests, and the second category is personality tests. The fundamental difference between those two is that ability tests measure the quantum or magnitude of psychological characteristics, whereas personality tests measure recurring pattern, clarity of preference, or frequency of display of psychological characteristics. Ability tests are quite close to other kinds of tests that we see in our normal daily life. Personality tests are unique to the domain of social science. Let's take an example to understand it better. Imagine that you are president of a law firm and you need to hire the best law graduates. Legal practice needs high level of verbal skills and critical thinking, as there are many laws, rules and regulations worded in quite complex way, and the legal practitioner is supposed to critically evaluate them, then relate them to the case in hand. As you can see, verbal skills are about knowing more and more words and use them appropriately. It is a matter of quantum or magnitude. One person might know 500 words, while the other might know 5,000 words. One person might make zero grammatical mistakes in 500-page documents, while other person might make 1,000 mistakes in the same size document. This is ability, where you have more or less of something. Now, let's extend the same legal profession example to understand personality tests. Legal professions these days are not only about knowledge and application of law, but also about creating and maintaining a beneficial relationship with the client. And there are certain personality factors which play a role in forming and sustaining this relationship. One such factor is self-confidence. A legal professional should display high level of confidence to project a positive image for the client. What is high level of confidence? As you can see, it is not about having more of one ability, like knowing several hundred words, but it is more about displaying different kinds of behavior which exhibit confidence. For example, talking in a calm and poised manner, not getting agitated on cross-questioning. There could be many more indicators of self-confidence, and a person with high level of self-confidence is not the one who displays more or less of one indicator, but the one who displays maximum number of indicators. And sometimes there is no possibility of levels in the indicators. Either the person has it or doesn't have it. Tests which measure this kind of psychological characteristics are categorized into personality tests. Now let's look at different kind of tests within each category. As we have seen till now, ability is about having more or less of something. From a measurement perspective, it can be conceptualized as the best one can do on a particular task in a limited time, which is called speed test, or with unlimited time, which is called power test. Let's first look at speed tests. In speed tests, you get the maximum score not by just answering correctly, but by answering correctly in lesser time than others. In speed tests, the tasks are usually so easy that with unlimited time, 
almost all the test takers could deal with them successfully. Speed tests are suitable for testing visual perception, numerical facility, and other abilities related to vocational success. Tests of psychomotor abilities, for example, eye-hand coordination, often involve speed. As we see here, the kind of test depends on the kind of underlying ability being measured by the test. A task where people are asked to solve a page of simple additions as fast as possible would be a speed test. A test where a person is asked to press a button with her finger as many times as possible in 30 seconds would be another example of speed test. A power test contains questions or tasks that vary in difficulty to the point that no subject is expected to get all questions right, even with unlimited time. In practice, a definite but ample time is set for power tests. Power tests tend to be more relevant to such purposes as the evaluation of academic achievement, where maximum level of ability is what matters, and not the speed. Tests of vocabulary, verbal reasoning, data interpretation, critical thinking are examples of power tests. People who do not possess high levels of those abilities cannot solve all questions of these tests, even if they are given several hours. There are multiple ways to categorize ability tests. Another popular way to categorize them is as aptitude tests versus achievement tests. Search on the internet the difference between these two categories. The second general category of psychometric tests is personality tests. This category includes all non-cognitive tests like tests of vocational interest, preferences, personality traits, values, motivations, behavior styles, etc. There are two kinds of tests within this category. Tests which measure personality traits or trait-like characteristics and the type tests. In the trait-like tests, where there is a continuity between lower and higher score, People can be termed as having low, medium, or high level of these qualities. Multiple levels are possible between lowest and highest levels because the measurement is continuous. These tests are suitable for measuring personality traits like sociability, anxiety, openness, and many more. The second type of personality tests are called type tests. These tests do not measure continuous traits. They measure dichotomous characteristics like preferences. For example, in terms of spending your evening, you can have a preference for going outside or staying at home. You can exercise one of these preferences more or less often than the other, but there is no midpoint in the preferences. These tests are suitable for measuring personality types, behavioral styles, vocational interests, and so on. We will go deeper into this classification with more examples in the subsequent modules of this course. There is another way of categorizing personality tests which is based on what exactly the test is measuring and, as per that system, personality tests can be categorized as vocational interest tests, value tests, motivational profiles. It is very important to understand the different bases of classification of psychometric tests as administration and interpretation practices vary significantly depending upon the kind of test one is dealing with. Please take active part in the activities, ask questions in the forum, and do internet search to learn more about taxonomy of psychometric tests.